Welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I'm your host, Kieran Tross. I'm excited to talk about Microsoft's new authentication strength feature. Plus, I'm going to talk about MFA number matching. So let's begin talking about authentication strength. Authentication strength allows administrators to specify different authentication methods based on scenarios. Let's say you have guest users and you're like, hey, I need to make sure that I'm keeping company resources safe. You can now have specific authentication methods based on guest users alone. If you want to have uh, authentication requirements on a set of users, let's say high executive employees, you can have authentication methods for them because they may be accessing confidential data. Now, in terms of MFA number matching, it helps safeguard your environment against MFA spamming. So what is MFA spamming? MFA spamming. MFA spam has become more prevalent in our society. Hackers are always trying to come up with a new way to infiltrate a system. Hackers are getting through the first method of authentication, a user's password, and then hoping the user accidentally or even carelessly clicks on approve on their device. I read a Microsoft article that stated that 1% of users will accept an MFA approval request on the first try. So with the authentication strength, we're going about fixing a couple different things. We prevent accidental approvals. There have been times where sometimes you'll you'll get a request coming in and it says, you know, push for approval. And let's just say the user is logged into a web browser and they log into a VDI machine. And once they log into the VDI machine, the password is saved in the browser. Now that push notification is going to automatically pop up. But if the user is used to get going through that every day, they might think to themselves, hey, it's just the browser that's acting up. Let me just click OK so I can get to it. But that's actually a hacker. Another thing that we're going to be able to safeguard against is lazy users. Absolutely. Every organization has it where users just don't care. They don't think the security is that important. Plus, hey, they just work there. As long as they get their check, they don't care. And then finally, what we are able to do is increase our security posture. As an IT admin or administrator or even manager or whatever role you are in your organization, one of the things that you want to do is you want to always think of increasing your security posture because when you increase your security posture, you're able to sleep better at night. Last thing you want to do is have these security risks and have your company go on and get hacked. And then next thing you know, you're into a very, very long week. All right, Cloud Scholars, we are back at the Azure portal. And what I want to talk a little bit about and show you is uh, two, um, two major topics. This is one, the number of matching MFA. And then two, we're also going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the strengthening, right? So that's the uh, authentication strengthening. So one of the scenarios we're going to go through is applying, right, um, different uh, conditional access policies and using the strengthening based on uh, users in a higher team. So we're going to go through a finance exec team. And then another thing we're going to go through is applying that strengthening to users outside of our network. So if you see here, we have Peter Parker. And Peter Parker is a new user I just created for this uh, lab. And I'm going to go to groups and we can see that he's a part of the finance exec team. So that's good. So what we need to do is I'm going to come back here. Oh, I kind of just went to Azure Active Direct, which is fine. And I'm going to go down to security. So now I'm over at security. What I need to go to is authentication methods. And if you notice here, there's authentication strength preview, and then there's also policies. So authentication strength, um, you, can, you can use and you can set that up. But one of the things I want to talk about first is I want to go through uh, the number matching MFA. So if I go here and I'm clicking policies, which I'm already on, and I go to Microsoft Authenticator, what they have right now is this configure portion. And if I go and click on enable, and I can set this up to a select user so that I could do all users. And authentication meshes, I can make it for push. And then also when I come over here to configure, it'll give me a number of options. So the three options that we have here is require a number matcher for push notification, show application name in push and password notifications, and then show geographic location in push and password list notifications. 
So one thing I want to let you know is that it says right now, it says if the feature status is set to Microsoft Manage, it will be enabled by Microsoft at an appropriate time after the preview. So right now we're still in the uh, preview section, um, but I've already changed this. Most of it is was set to Microsoft Manage. I put it to disabled. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to enabled. And the way this works is the required number matching for push notification. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to see a screen like this. So this one actually shows all three of the um, different um, options that we had there. So one is to show geographic location in push and password notification, but it's also showing the number matching as well. So it says approve sign in, open up your Microsoft app and tap the number you see below. And you're going to also have to put that in. Remember, what we talked about earlier was um, we want to do is prevent accidental approvals. So with having to put the number in, you know, um, that right there is um, removing that uh, that uh, issue of, you know, accidental approvals within your environment. The show application name in push and password uh, notification. This one isn't showing the numbers, but it's also, it also, this one shows just the app and then the location. So if you're seeing, hey, approve sign in and it's, it's showing you, hey, this sign in is coming from, you know, Australia and you're in the United States, that's going to be a red flag. Well, hopefully for your users. So this is just something just that we're um, raise awareness in your environment um, and also for your uh, user base. So this way, you know, it, it, to me, this is something similar to uh, email banners, right? Where, uh, you know, you send those, when the emails come in and say, hey, coming from external sender, it just raises awareness versus you just seeing something and you're just clicking on it thinking, hey, you know, it's probably my browser because I'm signed into it and, you know, I hit refresh and it's probably asking me to dual factor authenticate. If a user is able to see, okay, I wasn't trying to log into the Azure portal, and then also, I'm definitely not in Australia. That will raise the awareness and help reduce issues within your environment and you all being compromised um, at your company. So what we're going to do is back over at the Azure portal, I am going to hit enabled and I'm going to hit enabled. And that's pretty much all you need to do for this. And just make sure basics we have for all users and we click save. Now, one thing I want you to know is that in order for this to really work is that you must, the users must be enrolled in MFA. If you could put this on, this policy on, great, perfectly fine, but you need to make sure that users are enrolled in MFA. Now, if you're doing per user MFA, you can do it that way. Or if you're doing conditional access MFA, um, where all users have to do MFA, then, you know, that's another thing as well. But you have to make sure that your users are all signed up for MFA in order for this to be applied. So I just wanna let you know about that. So now that we went through number matching MFA, let's go through the, the new um, feature authentication strengths. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at these authentication strengths. And what we have here is three, they're all built in. So Microsoft comes with these authentication strengths and basically, um, it's one for multi-factor authentication, uh, there's passwordless MFA, and then there's fission resistant MFA. And the way this is, is right now you can see it's not configured, but if we were to click on multi-factor authentication, it lets you know, hey, um, it's built in, it's a description, medium assurance authentication strength that includes multi-factor, for example, password plus text message. And then authentication flows, it's gonna say it's either Windows Hello for business or FIDO security, so on and so forth, and it's just all these OR statements, basically. If we come over here to passwordless MFA, you're gonna get less options. So what it's saying is, is high assurance authentication strength that includes methods with cryptographic keys, for example, FIDO2 security key. And then it goes into authentication flows, which is Windows Hello for Business, FIDO2 security key, certificate-based, or Microsoft Authenticator. And then finally, we have the efficient resistant one, which is most secure, which is gonna be Windows Hello for Business, FIDO2 security key, and then certificate-based authentication. So let's go about creating one of our own. So we're gonna come up here to new authentication strength. And what I mentioned to you before is what we wanna do is have users that access information outside of the network. So we're gonna have a authentication strength based on that. So we're gonna say external, external, uh, 
authentication. And this is uh, users that access company data outside, if I can type, of corp. And what we want to do for this is say, okay, we want to make sure that it's certificate-based authentication. And then we could also do something where we can drop one of these down here as well. But it's all right. We can just do password, passwords and SMS, right? Text messages. And if we click next, it's going to let us know. It says during sign in, users will be required to authenticate using one of the following messages. And password is plus SMS or certificate-based authentication. And then you come over here and you click create. That shouldn't take too long. All right, great. So the next authentication method we want to create is we're going to say new authentication strength. And then this one's going to be for our exec team. So we want to make sure that this authentication is really high priority. So this is confidential. So this is confidential docs. Um, uh, uh, authentication strength for exec finance team. And we're gonna say, we're not playing any games with this. So we're saying, hey, listen, you have your FIDO key. That's the only way you're gonna get into it. And we'll just click, you know what? We could add one more. And we can click next. And that will be that. So what we're doing here is if you have a conditional access policy where you have push notifications for people to get into your environment or to access their emails, or so on and so forth, fine. But we're gonna take it up a notch to say, okay, this data is information, is you know, it's proprietary data uh, for our company. This is intellectual um, data, and we need to make sure that it stays safeguard. So right now, you you look, you have all these conditions here, but not they're not configured yet. So what we need to do is now run over to conditional access, and what we need to do is create a conditional access policy. So I have none right now, and I'm gonna click new policy. And the name of this policy is going to be um, external access. We'll just call it like that. And we're gonna drop this. And you know, I don't wanna do it to all users. Um, this is definitely a lab environment, but I wanna make sure that I'm doing it to a specific uh, user group. So I'm just gonna throw one user in there. Um, so I'm gonna, just gonna drop in, let's drop in Eddie Murphy. Let's click select. Now, you can just drop it to all users in your environment when you're doing it and make sure that you have an exclude so that this way you don't lock yourself out just in case something does happen. Uh, but I don't, I don't have uh, my known locations built out. So for this, I'm just gonna do it this way. You can still get the gist of the lab and then i can say here for cloud apps i can say all cloud apps you know it's giving me that message to hey make sure you don't lock yourself out and then based on conditions i'm not going to configure any of these but i want to make sure that hey it says include which we're, we're going to configure and we're going to say hey um we're going to say any location but we're going to exclude right and the location we want to exclude is the multi-factor authenticated trusted IPs. So we want to say anything that's a trusted IP that gets excluded from it, anything outside of it is going to get, um, is going to get that uh, extra strength uh, uh, MFA applied to it. Authentication strength, excuse me. So then now this is where the, the authentication strength comes into play. So it says grant access, right? You can say, hey, block access. But we're going to say grant access, but require authentication strength. And you see right here, we have the three that come into play automatically. That's the built-in ones. But then this also shows the other ones that we created. So I'm going to go external authentication because I already said, okay, for this one, I need to have this specific uh, multi-factor authentication for it in order for them to get access. So I'm going to click select. And then sessions, we don't really need to make any modifications here. Um, that's perfectly fine. And then make sure when you do create it, uh, you don't leave it on report only, which you can if you want to, uh, so you can see exactly how that um, MFA policy will be applied and who will be applied to. Um, it's good to kind of do the report only when you first are creating these uh, conditional access policies. 
uh, that feature definitely helps you out. Uh, once you are, have created the conditional access policies and you want to take it a step uh, further so you can have an understanding of how those policies are being applied, you can use um, Microsoft Insights uh, for conditional access. Um, conditional access insights and report, excuse me. That helps you out to find out exactly how those policies are being applied. Um, but that's a totally other video. I just want you to drop that nugget there for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on and we're going to click create. So while that's being created, we're not going to wait. Oh, there it is already. We're going to click a new policy. And I want to show you this policy because we talked about two that we were going to create here, right? We were talking about um, external access, but we also want to do something for our exec team. So we're going to say exec uh, confidential docs. And we're going to say we're going to drop this to a specific group. And that's got to be our exec finance exec team. And then what we're going to do for cloud apps, we're going to say select apps. We can say specific applications because it would make more sense. We don't want it for everything. And then we're going to say select. And here you would choose what you need to have access to. I'm just going to throw Azure storage. And, you know, let's just say we have some confidential information on the Azure storage and we'll just throw that in there. This is just all for, you know, um, lab purposes, but you get the, the gist of how it's supposed to work. And for conditions, uh, we're not going to put anything there for conditions. Uh, you're not going to leave any location information or anything like that. Um, if you want to do that, you can. But really what I want to focus on is this this portion right here and then grant access, but we're going to require authentication strengths. And there we're going to have confid confidential docs. So remember, confidential docs was a FIDO key and I believe also um, a certificate based. So then we're going to click on select. And then once we click on select, we can just come right down here and turn it on. And then we can click create. And that's pretty much it. That's how you go about with um, setting up um, uh, conditional access uh, authentication strengths. And then also that also that we also went over the number matching with MFA as well. So um, this was a mixture of a how to plus what is video. Um, I hope that you found the content of this video to be valuable. If you have any questions, uh, please leave it in the comments. I will be leaving Microsoft documentation uh, for you in uh, the description as well, so that this way you can read a little bit more about, you know, authentication strengths and the different scenarios that you can use it with. Um, if, if there's something that you are learning within Azure and you're not really sure, please leave a comment. I am more than happy to respond to you or you're taking some type of, uh, you're taking a certification or exam. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, help you out on your journey. So I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please, if you haven't done so, hit the like and the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Uh, here at Cloud Scholars, my, uh, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and then from consultant to expert. Thank you. See you next time.